Hello my wonderful, beautiful friends, I hope you're having a lovely day today. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled People, where people seem to think they can do whatever they want because they're special and they're better than you. Actually, I don't know if they all think that, but a lot of Entitled People do think they're better than everybody around them, so I don't know, it could be true. Anyways guys, you know the drill, get ready to shake your heads at some more crazy Entitled People. I do hope you enjoy today's lineup because I sure as heck did, and do hit that subscribe button for future stories. Let's dive in. So I live in a row house style neighborhood. My row and two others form a horseshoe where all the backyards face into a public space, with a few benches, trees, etc. The past few years, myself and a few other neighbors have hosted potluck style barbecue gatherings back there. We usually do this on some of the long weekends throughout the summer. We also invite some friends and family and some other neighbors, etc. Once the food is done, my neighbor and I usually bring out the guitars and jam, having beers all night. So, there was this one woman who shows up on occasion. Let's call her Karen. We have yet to see what she contributes, and nobody ever knows who invites her. She usually shows up with her husband and her kid. Now, let me tell you, crashing a barbecue and looting some food is one thing, but to have the audacity to complain about everything? She always complains about the food we cook. There's too much salt in this. I don't like the salad. You overcook the burgers. You get the idea. Anyways... As it does every year, my birthday falls in July, and it's also one of the usual barbecue occasions. Only, when I'm hosting, I provide a crap ton of pulled pork that has hung out for a few hours in my meat smoker, and often some chicken legs too. Neighbors and friends also invite some neighbors and friends, but I only ask that they let me know so I can provide enough meat. So this particular year, I also decided to throw in a few racks of ribs for me, my two boys, and my best friend. There was more than enough for us to have some and then put out on the table. But I decided that we were the first to have dibs, and then put them out. I mentioned this to people as well. So I'm doing my thing, tending to meats, making sure everybody has a place to sit, socializing with guests, and then enters Karen. She says, Hey, this warm cheese dip has too much garlic. Who made this? I told her, well, I guess not everybody's gonna like it, huh? Don't worry, the food's almost ready. She sighs and says, Fine, I guess I can wait. I pull out my pork shoulder to let them rest for a while and throw the drumsticks on the grill to give them a little char. Keep in mind, my prep area is in my immediate backyard and far enough away from all the food that there's no reason for anybody to really be in my yard with me. So here she comes again. She says to me, Hey, I do not like this beer. It tastes like water. Who brought this disgusting beer? It's all there is in the cooler. The other one only has kids' drinks. I tell her... That's my beer, and this is a BYOB. If you forgot to bring your own, there's some cans of pops with the kids' drinks. You can have one if you like. She says, Oh, that's too bad. I was really hoping for some good beer. Now, at this point, I'm starting to get annoyed with her and said, Well, I have a lot of meat to tend to, so if you could please stay out of my yard so I can finish, I'd appreciate it. I'm almost done, and then we can all eat. So I finish up the chicken, pull out the ribs from the smoker, sauce them, char a little on the grill, and cut them into two bone pieces and set them aside. Now keep in mind that I still have not served any of the meat yet, and people are lined up at the table waiting for it. I finish up pulling the pork, turn around, and there she is. She's standing there with about an entire rack's worth of ribs on her plate, and she's eating some. She's also mysteriously managed to acquire the beer of the exact same brand that I drink. She then says, This sauce is too spicy. Can I get some with different sauce on them? There's no way my son's gonna be able to eat this. Me, now really close to boiling point, said, No. No, I don't. I made those specifically for myself and my kids, and we're serving ourselves first, and what's left will go for everybody else. I made more than enough pulled pork and drumsticks to go around, and somebody else brought burgers and hot dogs. And she says, but these are really good, and we like ribs more than the other disgusting food. Can't you just put a different sauce on them? Lady, I already said no. I made them the way we like them because they're for us. Just be patient, I'll put some out once we've served ourselves. I take back the plate of ribs, and she says, Well, there's no need to be rude. I can't believe you talk to me like that. That's it, I'm done. I said, you think I'm rude? You're the one who can't seem to stay out of my yard, even though I've asked you many times. You're arguing with me over food that isn't yours, and you've also helped yourself to some of my beer after being told no. You can't just crash these parties all the time, and I never seem to see you bring anything. 
You always complain about everything, and nobody ever seems to know who invites you. Did you bring anything to share to the potluck? And she says, I brought myself. I'll have you know that my personality brightens up this gathering. I then asked her, who exactly invited you to my birthday? I think it's time for you to leave. At this point, she tells me that this is a public area that doesn't belong to me, that she can be here if she wants. She then tells me that she's going to report me to the property manager. I then told her that this isn't public food and beer. I'm pretty sure the property manager will at least agree with that. So thankfully her husband, who's actually a good guy, comes over when he noticed that there was a commotion, and he ushered her away. They then left. She did end up calling the property manager, who was kind enough to point out that there's also a public area behind her yard, and she can use if she wants to have a barbecue. Her husband came over later when the guitars were out and apologized for his wife. Apparently, they had no idea that every barbecue they crashed was actually a potluck. His wife would just say, Hey, we were invited to a barbecue for dinner. And then they'd just show up. So thankfully, that was the last barbecue of mine that she crashed, but she did show up to others, and I'd crack comments about her not bringing anything. Of course, I also made sure to make my barbecue sauce a little bit more spicy, just the way she likes it. OP sounds like a great neighbor to have, and did anybody else get hungry listening to the story? Some people are just too darn entitled and inconsiderate, guys. How can you show up to a barbecue on multiple occasions, eat the food, and then complain about it being disgusting? What in the world is wrong with some people? Nobody's forcing you to drink the beer that tastes like water, Karen, or eat the ribs that happen to be too spicy for you and your kid. OP is way, way too nice, guys. She should have gotten the boot the first time she showed up without an invite. So I work for security for a private business campus that has venues that are often rented by outside groups. One particularly large hall was rented by a local church group, and we sold their tickets at the box office immediately in the front of the venue. Without going into boring detail, there was only one way into the hall for general public, but numerous exits with cameras everywhere. Parking is free in three of our parking decks, except in the clearly marked reserved spaces, which will be important soon. While visitors were arriving for the event, our dispatch center received a call from our large campus tenant complaining that a car was parked in one of their 24-7 reserve spaces, and they need it moved ASAP. The company pays for these spaces and is constantly using them at all hours of the day and on weekends, which is why we have numerous high visibility signage warning people that towing is enforced. We reviewed the camera footage and saw that the owner was a woman dressed in fine Sunday clothes that were an almost painful shade of lime green with a matching hat. This would have been enough to identify her, even in our large hall, but then we noticed that she bypassed the ticket line and sneakily made her way into one of the venue's exit doors. She stayed there for several minutes, and when one of the cleaning staff exited, she slipped in behind them, not paying for her ticket. So as the supervisor on duty, I entered the hall and found her in one of the front rows, sitting in a group of people. She saw me coming in my security uniform and immediately scrunched up her face and said, I just sat down. What do you want? She was already on the defensive and loud, not a sign of innocence in my experience. I said, ma'am, I'm with the campus security and we need to ask. Her, cutting me off again, said, what you need to do is leave me alone. I'm sitting with my family and we're here to enjoy my nephew's concert. Are you trying to ruin my nephew's concert? You rent-a-cops need to get a life. Seriously, there's more important things to take care of and nothing you can interrupt with is more important than this concert. I tell her, (laughs) actually, it is important. If you wouldn't mind coming with me, we can talk in the aisle and... No! You ain't kicking me out of here at my own nephew's church concert. Now, she starts to avoid eye contact with me. Now, I want to note that she thinks I'm here because she didn't buy a ticket, but I didn't care about that. I'm trying to tell her about her car before we have to tow it. This is her only chance to move it herself. I told her, ma'am, I'm not here about how you got inside the hall. I'm here, her raising her voice even more, said, I don't know what you're talking about, but you need to leave me alone. So at this point, it was so comical that I remember getting the biggest smile on my face and telling her, you know what, that's all I needed to hear. Enjoy your show. I left and had her car towed immediately. Two hours later, she reported her car stolen to our security desk. The desk officer informed her that she parked in a reserved parking spot and that security tried to make contact with her before the show began. She denies it loudly and demanded to speak to whoever was in charge, and that's when I came around the corner and introduced myself. The look on her face was priceless, and she didn't say another word as I gave her the information for the tow company's lot, which was closed at that time. She definitely got what she deserved. 
This is an example of glorious karma at work, my friends. Parking in a reserved spot when you know you're going to be gone for two hours, sneaking into a concert to avoid paying money. Now, I'm not one to say this often, and I know it sounds so cliche, but the world works in mysterious ways, my friends. And today, Karen learned that she could not get away with things for free. She should have let him finish talking, man. So this happened about four years now, and is still one of the most ridiculous things to have ever happened to me. I was living in San Diego at the time, in a small apartment building with seven or eight units, and I lived on the second floor. Our building was right near the highway overpass on the outskirts of downtown. We were also very close to the airport flight path, which made our neighborhood pretty loud. At this point, I had lived in my apartment for just over three years, and I decided to get a cat, so I got permission from my landlord and paid a pet deposit. When I got her through a shelter, she was probably about three months old. So one night, while I was watching TV, there was a knock on my door. I answered, and standing on my porch were two police officers, both with their hands on their weapons, both seemingly tense. They told me that they had a noise complaint from my downstairs neighbor, who reportedly thought that I was on drugs and rolling a bowling ball around. It took me a few to understand what they were talking about, and then I laughed and said, Oh, <laughs> that's probably just my new cat running around. They were not amused. They told me if they had to come back, they would do something. Which is a pretty insane threat after finding out that the noise was from a cat. I left a message with my landlord to let them know what happened. The next day, my downstairs neighbor came to my door to apologize to me. He said he thought I may have been making or selling meth because his army intelligence friends told him so. They said that those noises he heard aligned with drug activity. Now, this made zero sense to me, but I came to realize that this guy wasn't all there. He said sorry, and was happy I had a cat, and even had a toy to give me. Cool. Problem solved, right? No. About a week later, I had police at my door again. This time, they were aware of the situation, and we all chuckled about how absurd the situation was. However, since they were called, they had to come. They told me I'm doing nothing wrong, and to not worry about a thing. Right around this time, my neighbor began hitting the ceiling any time my cat ran around. It got me anxious to the point of having my cat sleep in a separate smaller room, so she couldn't run around. This only lasted a couple of nights, since she would cry the whole time. I just thought, whatever, I'm doing nothing illegal, and we live in a city in a loud area, and it's an apartment. I'm not sure of the exact timeline, but about a week later, I had police at my door again. This time, it was the San Diego County Sheriff, with a court summons. This old bastard neighbor was trying to get a restraining order against me, and was claiming elder abuse. Yeah, because of the noise of a six-month-old cat. So the court date comes around, and I had printed about 15 to 20 pictures of my cat to show the judge. I was furious. My neighbor's evidence was handed to me, which was basically a list of dates and times that he'd marked down when he heard noises from my apartment. Now, this was legit insane, and five pages long, and I still have it. The judge did not want to hear any of it, and forced us to enter into a court-appointed mediation. I'm fine with that, I just wanted things to improve. I received a call a few weeks after our court date to let me know that the neighbor refused mediation, and that we would have a second court date towards the end of the month. Throughout all this time, he was banging on the ceiling and scaring my cat. He started being malicious and would just whack the ceiling in the middle of the night, even when it was dead silence. Oftentimes, waking me and causing my cat to go crazy and run around. Finally, the second court date was here. And at this point, I had already decided that I would be leaving San Diego. It had nothing to do with this ongoing situation, but it was the light at the end of the tunnel for sure. So we're in court, and the judge starts yelling at my neighbor for refusing mediation and wasting the state's money. I interrupted to say, I just wanted to make sure that everybody knows that this is about noise my six-month-old cat is making. I hear laughter from the other people behind me in the courtroom. Neighbor pleads his case, says I'm harassing him and making too much noise, and I repeat that this is about the noise my six-month-old cat is making. The judge is clearly pissed that this old man is wasting the court's time and says we must enter mediation. I tell him I'm sorry, we shouldn't even be here. I'm moving out of state in just a few weeks. And again, this is about the noise a cat is making. Again, there were a few chuckles from the courtroom. To this, the judge replies, Oh, well if you don't end up moving, then you'll have to come back to the court. I said okay, and was ready to be done with all this. My neighbor then chuckled and shook his head and tried to have pleasantries with me at that point, but I just ignored him and walked out. 
I wish there was some sweet revenge at the end, but really, I've never spoken to him again, and my cat and I are living happily in an apartment where she can run around to her heart's desire, and nobody can tell her otherwise. <laughs> this is a neighbor that OP really needed to get away from. Filing a restraining order on OP for elder abuse is just insanity. I love how neighbors can complain about noise from animals or children that can't necessarily be helped, but it's somehow acceptable for them to repeatedly and intentionally bang on the ceiling in retaliation. I feel so bad for the person that has to move into OP's apartment, because they're in for a lovely treat. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people, guys. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope you guys enjoyed the stories. If you missed the last episode I did, an entitled idiot freaks out that an ambulance took his parking spot because he doesn't give a damn who they're trying to save. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Check it out if you have not, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you.